where we took the blood and ran with it. And I give you guys the knowledge that was given to me in honor of him. Hey, what's going on, Bully fam? It's your boy, the educator, the scientist, Mr. Double Muscle Line Bulls himself, bringing you how I came into the Bully game. Pull up in motor cash. I got a show today. It's all I'm trying to do. Hustle and motivate. Choppers and throw away. So the way it started was I never even intended to become a bully breeder. Um, what really happened was I had seen these dogs online. Um, this was back in about 2012. 2012, I had seen, um, right graduating from high school actually, I had seen these dogs online and, and I fell in love with them. I thought it was amazing. Uh, I had always kind of been a dog lover. So to see um, something this, you know, compact with so much muscle. And at the time, at the time it was like, extent, it was extremes that were being bred. Like pockets and extremes were the real craze, you know, the extreme class. Um, exotic wasn't even really uh, super relevant yet at the time in the space that I was in. So what ended up happening was seeing these dogs online, I fell in love with them. I had a friend of mine who told me Hey, my uncle breeds these dogs. So I said, I, I gotta see these dogs. I gotta see it in person. I gotta see one of these in person. Um, so what ended up happening was they were able to speak to their uncle, uh, able to get me over there to come see the dog. And so he winded up, uh, and I never forget this. I, I walk into his backyard, and next thing I see is around the corner, these dogs just charge towards me, not aggressively, but just, it was, it was like breathtaking. Like I had never seen a dog that looked like that ever in my life. The dog that I actually saw was uh, Champion Leroy Brown. This dog looked like a grizzly bear. It was like, it was amazing to see something that looked like that. And the first thing I'm thinking in my head yet again as a dog lover is I want one, you know? <laughs> I fell in love with the breed so much. You know, uh, I would start to speak with um, my friend's uncle and uh, pretty much, you know, form somewhat of a, a relationship. I was really interested, I loved the breed. You know, he was breeding them, and at the time, I mean, him and a group of his friends were actually breeding the dogs, and they were actually super, super popular on the East Coast. I mean, if social media was big, you know, was as big as it is today, um, they, their, their names would have probably been way more huge. But I mean, for the time, they were breeding dogs way ahead of their time, actually. You know, when I look back, you know. Um, so I wind up building a relationship with him and um, I go over his house and, you know, I, I come see the dogs every once in a while. He's always, you know, he's giving me a little bit of information about the breed every once in a while and things like that. So like I said, we became, you know, we, over time we became friends. I'd seen how he was with the dogs and how he would, you know, give friends and family, you know, pet home dogs and things like that. And that, I was happy. I was happy if I could get, you know, a pet home dog, to be honest, you know. Yet again, still no thoughts of breeding. I just loved the breed and I wanted to have one for myself. So what ended up happening was uh, we sat down one day and uh, he was telling me, he said, you know what, um, you know, you like this breed, right? You know, you want to have one for yourself, right? Well, I would not give you one. <laughs> and that just kind of like shot me down. I was like, wow, all this anticipation, you know, me thinking I'm gonna get a dog from him and uh, telling me not giving you one. So this was kind of actually my first uh, lesson to be uh, leaning up to becoming a breeder without even knowing it. And um, he explained to me, he said, the reason why I would not give you a dog is because of the fact that, you know, you're, you're not financially st stable yet. You don't have, you know, at the time I didn't have a home or anything like that. So it was just the fact that, you know, I was in an unstable situation and it would be irresponsible to give me a dog. You know, God forbid the dog ends up in the pound or anything like that, which was something that, yet again, even for me today, I will not sell a dog to someone who is in an unstable situation. So. That was the first thing that rubbed off on me yet again before I even thought about breeding dogs, and uh, I was a little, I was a little pissed. <laughs> I said, "All right, you know what? Uh, that's cool." And in my head, I'm thinking, "All right, you know, screw this guy. I'm gonna go get a dog somewhere else. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out." I was, you know, I was a little bit pissed, you know, but I understood where he was coming from. 
So I started looking online, trying to find breeders. And this was <laughs> my first mistake with this breed. And my first mistake was looking online, I found a breeder. This breed is from America. It's, it's American Bully. For some reason, I found a breeder in Canada and went and bought the first dog up there. Picked up the dog, brought the dog home from Canada. And I'm thinking in my head, hey, he's gonna be like, man, I should have gave him a dog, things like that. And he comes over to my house and sees the dog and says, uh, you know, that dog won't ever look like my dog, right? And I'm like, wait, what? Like, no, this is, this is a bully. This, this dog's gonna look like them. You know, I have one of my own now. And he was like, look, and he, this was the first time I ever looked at a pedigree. He looked at the pedigree. You know, he showed me the parents of the dog. He looked at the, the grandparents of the dog. And just even the, the dog that I had, he was about eight weeks old. And the, we looked at pup, pictures of his puppies at eight weeks old. Eight weeks old, looked nothing alike. So that's when it made all sense to me. I was like, wow, this puppy is never going to look anything like his dogs. So, you know, it, it hurt a little bit, you know, but it was a lesson, you know what I'm saying? So I took that one on the chin. And what ended up happening was, I actually had a, a, a co-worker that was, you know, they just had bought their house, they had a kid, things like that. So I wanted up placing that dog with them, gave that dog to them for free. I believe I paid like 800 bucks or something like that for that dog. And at the time, you know, me fresh out of high school, that was a lot of money, but you know, like I said, I took that one on the chin. So that was my first lesson. So then some time goes by and I do more research and I'm working more with my mentor um, and he starts, you know, teaching me about, you know, whelping and, you know, show me the breeding aspect of these, this stuff, but I really still didn't care about that. I was, you know, puppy shots. I, I was just, I was really more worried about just having one for myself as a pet. Some time goes by, about a year, and I find another breeder online and he was in Massachusetts. And I'm like, wow, from his pictures and everything like that, at least from how pictures look, I was like, they look comparable to his dogs. I'm like, wow, you know what? I really think I got something. So at this point in time, now it, was, it wasn't an $800 dog anymore. It was, I believe the breeder wanted 2,500 for his puppies. And at the time for me, yet again, back in 2012, 2013, that was a lot, a lot ton of money now. I'm thinking, yeah, he's this guy, my mentor, he's, he's gonna feel it now. You know, uh, he should have given me that dog. And, um, ended up happening was similar scenario he looks at the dog and says angel you realize that this dog isn't going to look like the dog that um my, any of my dogs right and i was like what do you mean this is gonna look like it and then that's when we went into further depth as far as yet again understanding the pedigrees now understanding bloodlines you know understanding pics of the litter everything so on and so forth we went even deeper in, in that conversation and i was like oh man he's right again so that dog i said you know what i won't you know replace him i won't replace another dog i'll i'll keep him and i'll just continue to study and research and that's when it kind of hit me that you know what um, after the conversations that we had was that if I wanted to have a dog like them, I would have to produce the dog myself. And at the time, that's when it hit me that, um, that's when I wanted to become a breeder. Even the look that I wanted, you know, no one's just gonna give that to you, you know? Uh, you have to produce it yourself. So I wanted to produce that look myself. And that's when my love for really a breeder began because of the fact that, like I said, I wanted to be able to have that look more readily available and be able to, uh, you know, give that look to other people, you know, like me that were seeking it out and wanted to have it and purchase it for themselves as a, as a pet, at least originally. And that's where my breeding, you know, my breeding, that's when breeding started for me. So um, me and my mentor actually um, had stopped speaking for a couple of years. So out of those couple of years, I started just really doing research on this breed and started to, you know, save up my money because of the conversations that we had. It was not only, it didn't only apply to dogs, it also applied to life. And it 
really kind of helped push me to want to be able to purchase like my own home and have a steady job and things like that so that I could properly care for these animals and um, eventually be able to breed and produce the look that I was after. And what ended up happening was I contacted him, you know, a few years later and I just, uh, you know, sent, sent him a simple message just saying, you know, thank you so much for the things that you taught me. You know, he told me, he was like, I'm, you know, I'm proud of you. You know, I'm glad you did those things. You know, you're a homeowner now, you know, um, you have a steady job, you, you know, you, you started to have a family, things like that. So then the next day I get a text from him and I'm like, what's up? And he says, I have a dog for you. And to me, that just like, like blew my mind. Like I was so excited. I, I was lost for words, you know. A long story short, um, that's how I got my very first breeding stock. Um, and pretty much that female was, I believe his seventh or eighth generation. She was just given to me. It was a, a pup back kind of deal situation. And, uh, you know, he took me through every step when it came to doing the breedings. AIs, um, you know, collecting from the stud, you know, and like I said, our relationship kind of formed again, back, you know, back to mentoring me with everything. And now understanding more about this breed and how dog breeding was and things like that, because now I was more in tune to want to be a breeder. He was more of about the science when it came to these dogs. You know, he was um, a vet tech and he was actually studying to become, I believe like, you know, a human like surgeon. So very super knowledgeable when it came to the science of the stuff. So that was everything that was taught to me, you know, uh, over, I believe, 10 to 15 years, he was breeding dogs back when uh, he was breeding back when it was just, you were looking for blue pit bulls, you know, just breeding blue pit bulls, that was the thing. And then Razor's Edge and so on and so forth. So his bloodline stemmed from Razor's Edge. So we did that breeding and, and it, produced, um, it, it produced a really nice litter. You know, and I took that litter um, and then started producing dogs with it and so on and so forth. So um, in the first, in the beginning, you know, he was able to be there and help a lot. And I learned a lot of things along the way. And um, what winded up happening was uh, where things took, took a toll was very unfortunately, something happened with my mentor that caused him to become incarcerated got incarcerated you know at that point then we were kind of on our own you know and we were able to take the blood and and run with it you know and, and I mind you you know over after time it started to turn into more of the exotic look the exotic craze and that's the look that we went after um you know I would I would go visit him literally like every weekend you know we would talk about dogs we still do um I'd write him and send him letters about the dogs and things like that. What did he think about breedings, things like that? And um, kept him in on some of the deals that we had on, we had honored as breedings, you know, for the future and things like that, even later down the line. So it was a blessing to be able to, you know, take, you know, money from certain breedings. And and I mind you, we never we never did this for the money. So the money came way later be able to give, you know, his his family, his daughter, you know, money off of greetings that we collaborated on together um, was like the best feeling to be able to finally repay, you know, everything that he gave us, which was the knowledge, you know, because he was incarcerated, uh, he stopped breeding, obviously, um, and I actually have the last of his bloodline, so um, it's a huge honor. And like I said, we just took the blood and ran with it. Um, you know, another thing is being able to just even send letters back and forth and help, you know, uh, keep his mind on something positive while he's in there is also a huge thing. And just being able to be any help in any way, shape or form that I can and repaying some of the debt as far as um, everything that was given to us knowledge wise and things like that. And, um, that's pretty much brings us to now where we're at today. But we took the blood and ran with it. And I give you guys the knowledge that was given to me in honor of him. And uh, I guess the story's to be continued. That's why they follow me, huh? They think I know the way.